and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from Powersonic and Apprentice One to One. Today I'm in another plant room, another school, putting some more EV charge points. Thought I'd give you a quick look at this so you can see what we've got in here as well. Uh, the main MCCD panel board coming into the school. Zoom you out a bit there. So we've got these big Schneider uh, MCCBs. There's not too much going on at this school in fairness. It is a reasonably small primary school. There's a couple of existing side protection devices from Den, which is nice to see. There's one on the main panel board and there's one on this plant room subboard. If we open this up from here, you can see we're going to use this board. Loads of spare ways to stick our charge points into. We've got a nice big beefy feet down to it, so we're happy with that. You can see we've got our cables in up here. Um, Matt is running along this trunk in, then passes through to the outside wall, as I will show you. It didn't want to use any of this existing basket because it's just been screwed into the, the tin roof if you like it's a bit wappy and wobbly there's already a bit of weight on there um, you can see where it's hung over here actually a bit better just on those brackets that are kind of self-tapped in didn't seem like a, um, a long-term fixing solution to us although really it can't fall anywhere if it ever did they're on these little brackets across here and it is fixed into the rsj over there if you spot through that little gap in the pipework so if it ever did come down, it's only coming down onto the uni strip and the gas pipes. Um, but still, we didn't want to be part of that problem. So he's put some little arms off on the wall all the way along. We've stuck a bit of tray up just to support our cables. You see we've got the two in here um, ready to drop in to this uh, little distribution board here. Now, there was a slotted entry to the trunk in. Mike's decided to come in front of it because he wanted to gland the armors off and make sure that they're um, earthed down correctly with fly leads and whatnot. So we're going to get on with that in a sec. Um, he didn't have an earth nut for that one, so we're going to swap that. So we'll do that in a sec. This is our board we've popped on here. And again, we've got that coupled in. So we're onto the trunk in there, fixed to the wall, ready to go. This is the Proteus one, same principle as the last video. A couple of four pole RCDs going in here. They're going to be fed out of this distribution board there. Pretty straightforward. So we've got our C40 MCBs up and across. Drop down into here. A couple of RCDs. Out and away to the charge points outside. We're going to have a better look at the... We'll spend a bit of time um, playing around with the charge points. We'll try and um, demonstrate the test process on them again. So I got a few questions about it. As much as I said, it's a bit boring and we've done it lots. It seems people want to see it again. So we'll go through the testing process on these pod point solo threes. We'll make the video more about that. Uh, the last video we kind of covered the plant room side of stuff. So uh, this is the wider plant room in here. You can see we've got a nice big new BMS panel. This school's about four years old. Loads of new boilers, all these fancy pipes and bits and pieces that all look brilliant. I don't know what any of this does, but for those of you who work in BMS and that side of things, it may be interesting what these panels actually are and do. Nice to see all of the charts out and about to explain what everything is. In terms of our incoming supply, that's nice big beefy feed from the grid. Nice that they've marked the original values for voltage, your ZE and your PFC, PSC. Um, that then comes into the main panel board. So this is the main panel board. You can see we've got our main switch down there. We've got the MCCB for this board here, which is 100 amps. There is a little bit of load on here, not too much. So there's a part of cabin which has just got lighting on it. There's lighting for the kitchen and plant room. Um, lighting again, socket in the plant room, the gates. The biggest load that's on here probably is the BMS panel, which is this one here. We've had this monitored. So it's roughly drawing about 28 amps consistently. So like I say, there isn't a great deal going on. Um, when the kids are into school and all the hall lights and sockets are on, even at that stage, there's not a huge amount. So we've got the capacity in here to add in a couple of MCBs to cover our two charge points. If they're both in use at the same time, you could have that situation where you've got 64 amps going on there, but there is the capacity for that. And we've got the capacity on the main head down here as well. You can see we've actually had markings of the supply voltage when it was installed and the ZE and PFC PSC, which is very nice. Um, plenty of capacity off our main switch. Like I say, this is a pretty small primary school. There's not a lot of load going on. Um, it really is low, low current consumption um, for the install as a whole. And um, our addition of these charge points, again, it's going to be very limited into what it's adding. Nice to see some of the DEN SPDs. Don't know if I showed that already. So there's one off the main panel board, which is here. 
and one on this little distribution bar here so we don't have to worry about adding the SPDs there in. Um, yeah that's kind of where we're at, we're going to get this wired with the RCDs in, like I say that's on the last video, try and keep these to around 15-20 minutes so I'm not going to show that on this one but we've got two four pole RCDs in there and then coming out and across into these two MCVs which are going to then protect those circuits with overcurrent protection leading outside into our charge points and we'll go outside there and we'll run through the test process, Nathan's out there now just looking inside him and making sure he's wired him up correctly with Matthew last week, he wants to have a final little check in there. We'll go and see what he's up to. We'll run through the test process once I've got this lot all connected and energised. Outside in just a minute. So another school and this is the two pod point charges on the wall. You can see we've got our tray up and away. Cables exit. That's got the sleeves through the wall. I don't know if any of you used these before but it's basically a bung that sits into the masonry and runs through the cavity. as a little drip loop in. I'll show you one on another install we're doing soon but it's a way of making sure you get a, a fully watertight seal within a cavity. Um, straight up into our chargers here, these are bottom entry, Nathan's going to open them up because we need to make sure we've done the phase rotation right and a few other little checks. So we're going to have a look at that and make sure we're all happy there. So you can see Nathan's got us all opened up here. This is the internals of the pod point without the router in, you can see the one with the router over there. I'm not going to get up close to that because it's got all the login details and if anyone figures out where these are they could get in. Just to show you some of the components on the board really, there was a question in the last video um, regarding this, we've got all these Panasonic things, microchips, Wi-Fi chips, capacitors, all clever stuff. I guess if you drill down to all these charge points, they're pretty much the same in what they do and the way they work. It's just a different way of achieving it through software and clever electronics. Um, these do have a breathable membrane in the back of the PCB and also through the socket front, um, it allows for, if there's a change in pressure and ambient temperature to avoid condensation, it stops that from forming. One thing I will say with all of the charge points we go back to later on, they're generally super dry inside. They do seem to have really got on top of the weathering. Um, I know from some of the first, I won't say the brand, but some of the first ones we fitted, that wasn't the case. But certainly with the My Energies and the pod points and such that we go back to ICSs, they're always burned dry inside. So there's obviously been some kind of engineering decision gone on there to stop it being a thing. Um, yeah, we're going to get on with putting these back together now. See that one over there? get these powered up and we can run through the testing and commissioning phase again and I'll get a bit more of that on video this time. So plant room's all sorted, we've got our little board up there with the bar pole RCDs in, MCBs in the board over there, so we're feeding down into this and then up and away and outside as described. We're just going to zoom out now and go and give them a test. Nathan's just sorting the batteries into the MFT Pro, we've given them a... So let's go run through the test procedure and see how the pod points handle a bit of interrogation from the old TIS MFT Pro Plus. So I'm out at the pod point now, we're going to run through the tests. I've got the TIS MFT Pro Plus and adapter. Make sure you're getting set up for the right charge point is my first tip. So we're in TN mode, we are on the three phase, unvented, get all that straightened out. Hit start on the test, it tells you here how to position your leads. I've got them set up like this to start with. Essentially this is untethered, so you can bypass the continuity test and if you've got the updated version of the MFT Pro Plus it gives you the option to exclude some tests but on my version it doesn't so you kind of have to cheat a little bit. You can use a wander lead and go back to the earth bar as I sometimes do but we've just popped it in there for now so it sort of bypasses that. If you don't have a um, tethered lead it's kind of a pointless test in my opinion. Now we need to swap these leads back into the traditional way. So back in to all of the right homes. Make sure we do that. And make sure we've got all of our dials in the right position. So we need to be on NC, and status A, and in OK, which we are. Get my fingers out of the way. So we're all set up there now. We can hit tick. So we can hit test and start running through the insulation resistance tests. You can see this doing it on L1 now, it's giving us an OK, if we hit save it tells us to move the red lead into L2, this is why I don't like filming this because it's really difficult, uh, but we'll save that, I've swapped it over into L2, it's automatically starting the next test now, and it's giving us another all clear, so I'll save that, and then we want to move across onto L3. The tick and it should automatically oh, start running through it. Straighten the probe out there. And there we go, and now it's going to go on and do the neutral as well, straight away. Give us all our IR values. 
and we'll clear off the scale over 500 meg so we can see okay so check your dial positions again we're all good there we can move on to the next test and you can see it's given us a satisfactory value and i need to move into state b which we can do and we want to be in 32 amp which we are states okay and away we go the tick again happy with that save it and then i want to be in c which we are 32 amp and okay do its little jiggery perkery there and now it wants a faulty protective air which we can put it in that state let it do its magic save that and now into the faulty e mode and it's happy with that it's now going to do its ZS test so we make sure we're in the right configuration for that so we want to be in c32 and back into status okay hit tick run the test and it should go off and get us our um zs on the circuit it'll give us the impedance between line and neutral as well which is a nice little extra feature the mft pro does on all of its loop tests and you can see we're quite satisfactory in there happy with that so we can save and move on it's now going to do the rcd type a test we're all the same configuration we can hit the run button or the go button it'll ramp up and take us out 22.5 milliamps nathan yeah. turn that rcd on again yeah. nathan's living life at the minute he's done this about five times already off camera while we've tested both of these and now i'm trying to get one on camera for you guys and you should see that that in a minute he's restored the power i'm just going to swing it over to mode a and back to c just to reset the internal RCD that I believe this pod point has. Well, I know it must have because it keeps doing that. Um, so we're in 32, C and OK. So we're going to do our six milliamp DC leakage test now. This is the one I was interested in seeing with the pod point. So you can see I've just reset it. I've got it into status C, 32 amps and OK. We're going to hit the test button and see how it behaves. So you can see the TIS MFT Pro Plus slowly ramps up unique feature of this tester i don't know if other brands are copying by now but you can see slowly moving up and this is how you are supposedly best served testing this particular feature of ev charge points and it should cut out before we get to a level that could present danger and blind the rcd and you can see it has it's gone at 4.2 milliamps 840 milliseconds and the charge is now in a fault condition so if we reset it again by going to status a back to status c and it's happy again and that's the test process complete and um, we know this EV charge point's happy it's working as intended and we've verified compliance with the regs and all of the features that it claims to have built in and I have noticed it must have some sort of type A RCD internal to it because it's operating that on occasions alongside the RCD inside and it needs resetting with the adapter by moving to state A and then back to there's some electronics going on there but we'll have a little chat about that in a minute so I've got extensive pins and needles now in my feet having been held down running through that test process. I hope you found it useful. It was a bit of an experiment just to see on camera how it behaved with that DB6 milliamp test that the TAS MFT Pro Plus can do. And it seems that the pod point is happy to be tested in the same way a lot of the other charge points are. See the front room behind me? We've got our um, MCV, as I said, in this board just here. We've got our little RCDs up in there another one signed up got any questions on the install drop them in below i'll have to edit that bit out we're going back to the other school which you've seen on the channel already i did say where that was just a minute ago so i'm going to edit that section out to show you installing the rc basically in line as we've showed you on the last two videos so you've got your mcv out of your main board through an rcd which gives you the protection you need out of the charge point that's another one ticked off like i say the containment security in this plant room is a little bit to desire this is quite twangy when you're up there, there's a bow in there. Matthew really wasn't happy with it at all. He was cursing because I had suggested just utilizing existing containment. Even these trays up here and the hung lights off and all sorts. Um, yeah, it's not, not the greatest. So there is issues, plant rooms that you'll come across and it's important to make sure you're happy with containment if you are going to use it on your installs. Until the next video, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, get involved in the comments. As always, a subscription to the channel would be immense and it makes a big difference to keeping these videos going. I'm trying to use some of the funds generated through the YouTube ad revenue to help apprentices around the UK with tools and equipment. So just by subscribing and making sure you watch a few more of my videos, you can be contributing in my efforts towards that. 
thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one.